Hello everyone and welcome to Pension Awareness Week. My name is Catherine Murray. I'm the Training and Engagement Manager at my CSP. We're the Administrator of the Civil Service Pension Scheme and I'm here to guide you through the world of civil service pensions this week along with representatives from my training team. Joining us today we have Kelly Freeney and Liliana Gonzalez and we're going to talk to you as new joiners to the Civil Service Pension Scheme. So if you are new to the scheme or maybe just want a refresher of the basics of how the Civil Service Pension Scheme works then this session today will hopefully have lots of useful information for you. We're going to talk about the Alpha Scheme, its benefits and how it works and also look at the options that are open to you as well when you're a member of the Alpha Pension Scheme, including switching to our Partnership Scheme as well, which is an alternative choice available to all members. After our presentations on today's session, we'll have a live Q&A. So if you do have any questions for us today, then do please feel free to drop them into the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer as many of those questions for you as we can as we run through today's session. OK, so to get things started, then I'm going to hand you over to Kelly, who's going to talk to you about some of the benefits of the Alpha Scheme. Over to you, Kelly. Catherine, morning, everyone. So like Catherine said, my name's Kelly and I am one of the senior consultants at my CSP. So we may have met before on other courses or it may be your first time with us today. So welcome. Now, the session that we're going to talk about today is new joiners. So what is a new joiner? So if we're looking at this, a new joiner is somebody who is new to the civil service scheme. So when you join the scheme, you will be automatically eligible to be enrolled into the Civil Service Pension Scheme, which is Alpha. Now, there will be a few scenarios where you won't be, but we'll have a little look at those in a moment. We're also going to have a look at what the Alpha benefits are. We're going to then have a look at the options that you get after joining the Alpha Pension Scheme. We'll look at the transfer in process and we'll also be looking at the pensions portal registration. So like I said, when you first join the civil service, you'll be automatically enrolled into the civil service pension scheme. Now, there'll be some situations where you won't be eligible. So if you've on a secondment from another employer or you've been employed locally overseas, then you may not be eligible to join the civil service pension scheme, but it would be alpha that you would go into. Now, Alpha is what's known as a defined benefit scheme. Now, that means based upon a set calculation, there is a promise that what you have received during your benefits in the civil service pension scheme is what you'll then receive for the rest of your life. Or alternatively, you can choose the DC option. Now, that's known as partnership. Now, the civil service pension scheme has some of the lowest membership contributions in the public sector. It's guaranteed for life. So whether you are in retirement for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever that may be, what you have earned as pension is what you are guaranteed to have for life. It does have CPI added to it each April. So that's applied each April if CPI is declared as above zero. There are benefits for both your family and your loved ones, which we'll discuss more in a moment, and also options to take a tax free cash retirement lump sum. Let's have a look at how Alpha works. So Alpha uses pensionable earnings. Now that's what you've earned from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. That's also referred to as a scheme year. So that may be a term that you see when we're referring to your pension benefits. It uses an accrual rate. So an accrual rate is how much you earn of pension each year. Now the accrual rate for Alpha is 2.32%. It also uses an inflation adjustment. For the last couple of years, inflation in Alpha has tracked CPI. So, for example, Alpha members this year will be receiving a 6.7% uplift to their pension. Alpha members last year received a 10.1% uplift to their pension, exactly the same rate as our retirees received. So how does the pension scheme work? Now, a lot of rumours in the civil service talk about average salary when it comes to Alpha. That's incorrect. It's called a career average scheme. We do not at any point average your salary in Alpha. So when we're looking at the scheme, you need to be thinking of it as a building block scheme. So it's a step by step process towards a bigger pension for your retirement. 
So for example, the first year that you are in alpha, we take 2.32% of what you've earned and bank that in year one. So this would be your purple block that you are seeing here. That's then carried forward over into year two. So this purple block then becomes your grey. That's your starting amount for year two. Any cost of living adjustment is applied on top. So like I said, for example, last year that would have been 10.1%. Then a further 2.32% would be added of what you've earned on top of year two. Those three would then be added together at the end of year two and carried forward into year three. Again, any cost of living adjustment would be added on top and a further 2.32% on top of there. Those three are added together and carried forward into year four. That's how career average works. We are not averaging your pay at any point. Now let's have a look at how this looks in figures. So like I mentioned earlier, the accrual rate for alpha is 2.32%. That doesn't change. That's the same year upon year. The assumed PI is what changes year upon year. So for this example, we're going to use an assumed PI of 3.1%. The members earnings for year one, we're going to use as 28,000. Now it is worked out in pounds and pence. It's just been rounded up as a whole figure to make it easier for you to be able to follow. So it's 28,000 of salary times 2.32% because as I mentioned earlier, that's what's referred to as the accrual rate. That then gives you 649 pounds and 60 pence. That's what would be bank as your starting block in year one. That's then transferred over into year two. So like I showed you earlier, that's your starting point in year two. And what we do is we take the previous year's balance from year one, which is now the starting point in year two, and times that by the cost of living adjustment which I said in this example is going to be 3.1%. That then gives you a bonus pension payment of £20 and 13 pence. They then earned 30,000 in year two. So it's 30,000 times 2.32%. That then equates to £696. So their end of year two balance is then those three elements added together. So what they brought forward from year one, their bonus payment from year two, and what they earned in year two gives them £1,365.73. That then becomes their starting block in year three. Same process works year upon year. Now, what other options does this member have if they wish to leave after two years? Now, your normal pensionable age which is the age that you take your pension without having any reduction applied, is your state pension age. So for some on the call, that may be 67. For others, that may be 68. So your normal pensionable age for alpha, so taking your pension with no reduction, is your state pension age. You can choose to claim your benefits earlier. Now, the minimum age for alpha is 55. So the minimum age you can currently access your alpha pensions is 55. But there would be a reduction applied to that because it's being paid for a longer period of time. You also have the option to take a tax free lump sum. Now that tax free lump sum is tax free regardless at retirement. So whether it's £10,000, £50,000, £100,000, that lump sum would be tax free to you at retirement. So there is a maximum limit that you can take overall, but there is a limit for yourself. So you'll have a value of your pension and that then equates to the value of lump sum you can take. So let me show you how this works. So a member chooses to claim their pension at 60 years old. So that's before their state pension age. So in this example, we're assuming the member state pension age is 68. So they're going to have an eight year reduction, which is roughly 32 percent. So the annual pension that we started off with, which is one thousand three hundred and sixty five pounds and seventy three pence, is then reduced to nine hundred and twenty eight pounds sixty nine. And they would then receive that nine hundred and twenty eight pounds sixty nine every year 
in their retirement until they passed, and it would be increased with inflation as well. Now, the member could choose alternatively to also have a tax free lump sum. So let's look at the example of them leaving at 60 and also taking a tax free lump sum as well. Now, for every one pound that you give up a pension, you're entitled to 12 pounds worth of tax free lump sum. Now, the pensions portals calculator will calculate this for you. We're just going to show you an example of how this happens. So in this scenario, the member's maximum lump sum is £3,980 and 10 pence. Now, if they want to receive that, they've got to give up some of their pension. So what we do is we reduce the pension on the 1 to 12 ratio. So their pension would be reduced from £928.69 to £597.02. So that would then be their annual pension with a tax-free lump sum of just under £4,000. However, if the member chooses to leave their pension until their state pension age, then no reduction would be applied. So let's have a look at an example in that scenario. So their pension lump sum entitlement would be £5,853.12 because that's based upon the value of the pension at £1,365.73. If they choose to take that lump sum, their pension would then be reduced to £877.97. Now, how much are you paying in order to receive these benefits? So you're paying your member contribution, which is based upon your salary band. It has no correlation to the scheme that you are in. So the previous schemes that members used to be in, if you hear from obviously colleagues, members are paying the same level of contributions. It's now all based upon your salary band. So for example, if you're earning over 34,200, but under 56,000, you're paying 5.45%. What you may not be aware of though, is how much your employer is paying. So they are paying 28.97%. So they are the ones that are footing the majority of the cost for you to be in the pension scheme. In the private sector, member plus employer contributions on average since 2021 is 8%. So your employer is paying far and beyond that. So what do you get for your contributions? So let's have a look at an example. So Mr X works for two years in the Alpha Pension Scheme. In the first year, he earns 28,000, and in the second year, he then earns 30,000. So this gives him an annual pension and retirement of 1,365 pounds and 73 pence. So like we showed you earlier, that's what he used and earns for two years in the pension scheme. Now, in those years, Mr X paid contributions of 2,688 pounds and he retires at state pension age with a pension of £1,365.73. So that means in 1.9 years of retirement, he's recouped all of his pension contributions. The rest of his retirement is financed by then his generous employer contributions. So that's what I mentioned earlier, they are the ones that are footing the majority of the cost for you to be able to have a pension scheme for life. Now, what else comes with your pension benefits? So we have what's known as the death in service lump sum. Now, this is usually two times the value of your salary. Now, that's paid tax free if you have a nominated party. If you don't have a nominated party, it can be paid to your estate, which could then be taxed up to 40 percent. Now, roughly only 41 percent of the active workforce has a nominated party on file. So if anything was to happen to the other near 60% of you, yours could be paid via your estate. Now you can nominate via the links and they will be shared a little bit later. And you can also nominate via your pensions portal. But please do make sure that you have a nomination party. Do not assume that because you are married, it's automatically paid to your widow because they are a separate benefit altogether. So we also have adults and children's pensions. So an adult pension, will pay a husband, wife, civil partner and long term partner. 
And they will also pay a child's pension for a child who is financially dependent upon the member at the event of their death. Now it is based upon certain criteria. If you become too ill to work, the pension scheme could also offer you to support you in your time of need. Now that could be paying your pension out early without any reduction or paying your pension out early with enhancements, but the pension scheme can offer you that support. Now there's also options in order to be able to boost your benefits. They can do this in more than one way. You can either have added pension, AVCs or EPA. So added pension is the ability to buy more pension. So if you're buying a bigger pension, that will also equate to a bigger lump sum because that's based upon the value of your pension. And you can also choose to increase your widow's and children's pensions as well. Now you can pay for this in more than one way. You can either make monthly contributions from your salary before tax. The application will open soon, ready to start from the next tax year in April, or you can buy a one off lump sum per tax year. Now there is a calculator online which will tell you how much this would cost. You can also use the application online to be able to start any added pension from either your monthly pay or a one off lump sum. So like I said, if you buy an added pension, it's boosting your overall pensions amounts. An alternative option is additional voluntary contributions or an AVC. So this is the ability to have a private pension linked to your civil service pension in the way that you're making contributions from your salary before tax and it's then paid into an AVC on your behalf. Now it's managed by legal in general and works exactly the same way as a private sector pension would. So the value of it can go up and down. So what you pay in is not guaranteed to be what you get out. But you can use that to have flexible retirement benefits in the future. And lastly, we have EPA. So that is the ability for alpha members to buy out the reduction of going before state pension age. Now, dependent upon your state pension age, you can either buy minus one, minus two or minus three years. So you can't buy out an age of under 65. So, for example, if your state pension age is 67, then you'll be eligible to buy out minus one or minus two years. If your state pension age is going to be 68, you'll be able to buy out minus one, two or three years. Again, you can pay by monthly contributions. And like I said earlier, the calculator will be shared and the application will open shortly and close early March in order to start in April. Or you can still buy a one off lump sum within this tax year. I'm just going to hand back over to Catherine for you. And Catherine will take you to the next part of the presentation. Thanks, Kelly. That was great. Um, so just something that wasn't mentioned at the very top of the session, just a little reminder for everybody that is today's session, along with all of the others this week, is being recorded. So if some of the information that Kelly shared there, you think you might need a little bit more time to digest, then you are able to watch the recording back. It will be available from lunchtime tomorrow and all of our sessions that we're delivering this week will be available from lunchtime the following day. So if, for example, that section that Kelly was just talking about there about boosting your pension, and we do have a dedicated session on boosting your benefits that's taking place on Wednesday this week. So if you wanted more detail on that particular topic, as well as watching back what's just been shared today, um, then you can look and watch that session if you haven't registered to attend, as it will be all available for you online later this week. We've got lots of questions coming in, which is great. Do keep those coming and we'll publish the questions that are relevant today's to, the, to today's session. Do please upvote the questions that you like rather than asking them again, and we'll focus on answering those that have the most upvotes when we do our Q&A at the end of the session. 
Something else I wanted to draw out from what Kelly had said there was just that information about the level of contributions that are paid by members and employers versus what you get back as your alpha pension. It's a really common area where members sometimes get confused in terms of how the pension scheme works. The level of contributions that's paid by members and employers is just there to ensure there's enough money to finance your pension benefits in retirement. Um, it's not directly related to the pension that you're going to get back at retirement. So it's just there to ensure we can afford to pay those pension benefits out to you. And that's the example that Kelly showed. In that particular case, the member got back all of the contributions that they had paid in less than two years from claiming their pension benefits and the rest of their retirement is all financed by the employer contribution. So it is from that perspective a really good benefit to have. You get a really sort of quick return on your investment in the civil service pension scheme. OK, so we're going to move on to our second part of today's session and I'm going to hand you over to Liliana, who's going to give you some more information about your options on when you first join the scheme in terms of transferring benefits in from elsewhere and that partnership alternative as well. So over to you, Liliana, to take us through that. So hi again, my name's Liliana and I've been on the training team for about six, seven years now. So you might know my voice from one of our sessions, um, but if this is your first time, then welcome. So um, I'm going to start us off with transferring in. So when you join the civil service pensions, if you do join Alpha, you do have 12 months to transfer in any benefits you have outside of the civil service into the Alpha pension. So you're able to transfer private or public sector pensions pensions into Alpha. Um, and the difference is kind of what Kelly's gone through already. So public sector pensions tend to be your defined benefit pension. So if you have previous service in local government, uh, NHS, police, firefighters, teachers, just to name a few, um, they offer very similar terms across the public sector. So these are the types of pensions that are, again, based on um, your service and your pay rather than investments. So public sector pensions, there is a dedicated page on the civil service pension website. It's called the Public Sector Transfer Club. So if you do want to have a look on the website, uh, we highly recommend you do so, just so you know exactly what we mean by public versus private sector. But as mentioned before, private sector pensions are pretty much the majority of the pension market as a whole. These are your uh, investment based pensions. So um, legal in general, National Pension Trust, Nest, um, Scottish Widows, Standard Life, just to name a few. Um, private sector pensions make up the majority of the market. They are investment based. So when you're thinking about whether you want to transfer benefits and we get that question quite a bit is, you know, what what would be the benefit of bringing it into Alpha? So transferring in means you're taking a pension from somewhere else and you're bringing it into your Alpha scheme. So you're buying additional annual alpha benefits with a previous pensions value. So again, you can do um, multiple um, schemes if you wish to transfer uh, multiple schemes in, you can do. Um, there's a process that you'll follow. Now, um, the first thing you'd want to do is fill out the form. It's on the civil service pension website. Um, you would fill out one form per scheme that you want to transfer in um, and that will let us um, contact your previous pension scheme. So again, the form is available online. You fill out one form per scheme you wish to potentially transfer in and we'll use that form to contact your previous pension scheme. Um, and then once we've contacted your previous pension scheme, they will let us know what your pension's worth and we'll use that valuation to calculate how much additional benefits it would purchase you in Alpha. So say, for example, you have a pension with Nest, for example, and it's worth £20,000. That will buy X amount of Alpha pension. So we would tell you um, your um, previous pension's worth 20000 for example. 
and this would buy you X amount of alpha pension, do you want to proceed? Now you have to accept that transfer in quotation within 12 months. So this is a very time sensitive subject. You have 12 months to accept that transfer in quotation and um, to bring those benefits into alpha. So just bearing that in mind. Um, so in a nutshell, again, you're using a previous pension to purchase additional annual alpha benefits. And if you do transfer into this scheme, those alpha benefits would also be linked to inflation. So every April they would be adjusted for inflation. Um, and yeah, again, this is boosting your annual alpha pension with a previous pension. So again, I, I do host the new joiner pension powers along with Kelly and the rest of the team. And one of the most common questions we get are what's the benefit? Why would I bring something into alpha? And the answer to that is that you want to decide for yourself if it's the best for you. So everybody's circumstances are different. Um, you know, there's not a one size fits all approach to retirement, but alpha again is defined benefit, which again, what you get from the pension is based on formulas, based on calculations, and that's based on how long you work and how much you earn. Um, it's a guaranteed payment at retirement. So when it comes to security, alpha is pretty much as secure as it gets. You know, the government is guaranteeing the alpha pensions be paid at retirement for life. So you have the opportunity to bring private pensions in that are based on investments into that alpha pension, which again is a guaranteed payment at retirement. So my biggest question is usually what is your risk appetite? You know, with investment based pensions like partnership, which is your alternative, I'm going to go over that in a second. Um, would you rather have your pension in that investment based scheme uh, where the value can go up or down? Or would you rather have that guaranteed annual alpha pension? And everybody's answer to that is going to be different. But that's the one thing I would you know, I would have you take away and ask yourself is what is my risk appetite? Would I like that alpha pension or would I like to keep, um, you know, that investment based pension where it is? Now, again, public sector pensions, um, like again, your NHS, local government, they're all very similar to each other. So um, again, you just want to make sure you're looking at all of the information that we present to you, because again, the transfer in quotation will say your previous pension was worth this. And it would be worth this in alpha if you transfer, would you like to proceed? So you'll have both options to um, look at, to ponder um, and, and make your decision. So you can start this process. You don't have to finish it. You might think in the end, I don't want to keep my pensions in one place. I'd rather keep them separate. You can do that. But again, you've got this one opportunity within your first 12 months of joining to bring in any previous pensions outside of the civil service into alpha. Um, and once that 12 months has passed, you don't get another opportunity. So again, even if you're thinking about it, it's worth maybe engaging with the process and making an informed decision, getting those figures first and then making a decision. Um, so that is transferring in. Now, as mentioned before, um, when it comes to, there we go, excuse me, my slides are a bit stuck. Oop, there we go. So when it comes to, again, the options, when it comes to your civil service pensions, there's two options. There's alpha, which you are automatically enrolled in, as Kelly said, or you have the opportunity to go into partnership instead. Now, partnership is the defined contribution arrangement. Again, that means this is an investment based pension. But if you would rather be in partnership, you can join at any time. Again, legal and general are the provider for this scheme. Again, it's defined contribution, which is kind of what it sounds like. Your contributions are defined in advance. So what you actually get from the scheme is based on how well your investments perform over time. Now, if you choose to go into partnership, your contributions are optional. You don't have to pay contributions towards the pension if you don't want to for whatever reason, but your employer will always make contributions toward this on your behalf. And whatever contributions are made from yourself or your employer, they are invested. And you have the choice of where those investments go. So you've got low, medium and high risk investments. Now, legal in general have a finite number of funds to choose from. And you can either choose yourself, you can choose exactly where your money goes, 
or you can have the scheme choose for you. And um, it's called the default investment. So if you don't choose anything or if you would rather, you know, you can choose that option. And again, they'll usually put you in higher risk investments while you're younger, move on to medium and lower as you approach retirement. So you, you know, you're very much in the driver's seat with this. You choose where your investments go, you choose how many contributions you make, if any, and then when you come to retire, it's flexible with how you can take these kinds of benefits. So again, your contributions are optional, but if you do decide to contribute, your employer will match up to a further 3% of contributions. So these are the contributions that your employer makes. And as you can see, it's dependent on age. So they put in between eight and 14.75%. So again, the contributions, um, these are made and any contributions made are invested. And your employer does tend to put in more as you approach and get closer to retirement because your benefits are anticipated to be paid sooner. So with that, again, your contributions are again invested. Uh, and it'll be the investments you make and the returns over those investments over time. And that will form a single pot of money. So say, for example, you've contributed 50,000 pounds throughout your career, made 50,000 pounds on the investments, your pot is 100,000 pounds. So again, it's a single figure of what your pot is worth when you come to retire. So when you come to um, claim your benefits, you can do this um, in a number of ways. The first is to take a fixed regular income and it's called an annuity. So it's using that single figure of money and purchasing an income. So it's an amount that's usually going to be paid to you every month for life, um, but there are other options. So things like taking it as a lump sum, so these types of pensions, so DC pensions, defined contribution pensions, you are able to potentially take these fully as a lump sum. 25% would be tax free. The remaining is taxable. But some people do both. Some people take a lump sum and use the rest to purchase an annuity. Um, but in these types of pensions, there's also the potential to draw down, which means you can take lump sums as and when, and anything that doesn't get taken remains invested and hopefully grows your pension pot further. But again, it is capital at risk. So the value, the value of these benefits could go up or down because again, it's based on the performance of the investments. Now, the minimum pension age is currently 55, but it is rising to 57 in 2028. So if you have any DC pension, that is going to be 57 minimum that you can claim those benefits from 2028. So as mentioned before, um, you have the opportunity to go into partnership at any time. So you can switch within your first month of joining and the contributions would be backdated to your first day of service. But again, you can switch any other time with two months notice. So you don't have to be an alpha if you don't want to. At any point, you can switch and you can switch once per 12 months. So you can go into partnership, be in partnership for a time and you can switch back to alpha in the future. Again, one switch per 12 months. Um, and that form again is available on the website. Um, and if you're looking to apply for partnership, the application is with legal in general um, in terms of um, the application. Again, their application, you would fill out and submit it to your employer. Um, and again, the provider is legal in general. So the application is on the civil service pensions website. Um, you fill that in and again, submit that to your employer and your employer would guide their payroll accordingly. But again, the provider is legal in general. So when it comes to the administration of the scheme, when it comes to um, your benefit statements, all of that will come directly from legal in general. So um, again, partnership, you would have a benefit statement with legal in general. They would tell you what your benefits are worth, uh, but legal in general will also give you access to a pension portal online so you can keep track of your investments and your contributions um, online every day, of course. Um, but again, that would come directly from them. So again, 
as your new joiners and you're here with us on this new joiner session, um, just a few takeaways. Again, the question you want to ask yourself is, would you rather remain in alpha or would you switch to partnership instead? So again, alpha is that defined benefit pension. So again, what you get in alpha is based on how long you work and how much you earn. It's not based on investments. Again, it's based on your civil service and your pay. It's a guaranteed payment. It's guaranteed for life. It's also linked to inflation. So the value of alpha will always remain. Where again, partnership is investment based. The value can go up or down. Um, so again, the decision is going to be yours and yours alone. Now, if you want to transfer in again, if you want to do any transfers into alpha, they have to be done within 12 months where if you would like to transfer into partnership with legal in general, um, there's usually not much of a time limit on there. You can usually do that up until the point that you claim your benefits. But again, legal in general would be the ones to kind of go through that process with you if you might want to transfer any benefits into legal and general. Now with Alpha, you have the opportunity to buy additional benefits. So again, the three options with Alpha, you can buy an earlier pension age, which is EPA. You could instead buy added pension, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's buying additional pension that would be added to your Alpha account. Or you can do additional voluntary contributions, which means having that legal and general pension while remaining in Alpha. So you have that as an opportunity to do. Now, when it comes to making your nomination, when it comes to being in Alpha, your death benefit nomination is for any lump sum payable for your civil service. If you do AVCs or partnership, there are two death benefit nomination forms. One for being a civil servant, so there would be a potential lump sum payable from my CSP. So that would be the death benefit nomination form online or using the pension portal. But if you have partnership or AVCs, if you pass away before the value of that pension is paid out, that would be paid to whoever you've nominated. So there would be a death benefit um, lump sum from legal in general, and again, one for the civil service if you have alpha as well. So you can nominate the same people for both elements, or you can make nominations individually as well. So as mentioned before, the pension portal, when it comes to partnership or AVCs, legal in general will provide that to you. If you have alpha benefits, we would provide you your pension portal through the civil service pensions um, website. It's members, um, sorry, members.civilservicepensionscheme.org.uk. I think the links will be shared out with this session. Um, but again, the pension portal is going to tell you um, what your benefits are through your benefit statements. So annual benefit statements are provided every year and it tells you what your alpha pension is so far. Um, any um, spouses pensions, the death and service lump sum, if you've done added pension, or EPA, anything to do with your civil service pension is going to be on that annual benefit statement. Everything except, again, AVCs or partnership, which are with legal in general. But the pension portal will also have the retirement modeler, so you're able to project your benefits to the future, and you're able to see what your benefits might look like based on the age that you've chosen. So, um, you can choose an age from 55 to 75 and it'll tell you what your pension might look like based on your current circumstances. But to get logged onto the portal, you'll need your national insurance number, your date of birth, your employer, and a mobile phone. So again, you can make your death benefit nomination, which is again really important because we do act in accordance with your wishes. So, uh, you know, if anything changes, please do let us know. Um, now, we'll, you can check your personal details online. You can change your address um, and again, using that retirement modeler and again, your annual benefit statements are going to be your biggest tool in terms of your pension planning when it comes to alpha. So it's really important to get logged on if you haven't already.
So again, the benefit statements for Alpha will show you what your benefits are at the 31st of March every year. And they're available on the pension portal by the 31st of August. It takes a couple of months because we have to give your employer some time to give us the information that we use to calculate your benefits. Um, but again, this is going to be your biggest tool in terms of your pension planning. It's going to have all of the information about your Alpha pension or anything you do um, in terms of additional benefits as well. So again, um, that is going to be um, linked to your retirement modeler as well. So this is an actual snapshot of what the retirement modeler looks like and your projected pension will include the pension you have already and what pension you could accrue in the future based on the current earnings. So your current earnings will dictate what those estimations are into the future. Now, if you choose an age that's prior to state pension age in alpha, for example, you can take your alpha pension at state pension age with no reduction. However, you can take your alpha pension early, but if you take it early, it's reduced because it's probably going to be paid for a longer period of time. So if you choose an age that's earlier than your state pension age, the calculator will include any reduction for retiring early and it will reduce your pension if you're looking to take a lump sum as well. So again, this is going to be your biggest tool in terms of the pension planning because it has all of that information already included. All again you have to do is pick what age you would like to retire and how much lump sum you might want to take as well. So why is your pension important? So of course, your pension is going to provide you your income when you get to retirement, but also the civil service would potentially provide you benefits if you become too ill to work as well. Um, now, when it comes to ill health retirement, if you choose partnership, there is a potential lump sum payment where if you are going to be an alpha, if you become too ill to do your job in alpha, you would get your pension immediately with no reduction at a minimum. In some cases, we actually enhance an alpha pension, usually for those who are unable to work at all due to their illness. Hopefully that never becomes the case, but if you do have to explore that option, all you would need to do is speak with your employer and they would guide you through that process. The medical advisor would make their assessment and you could potentially be medically retired. But of course, um, the civil service provides you your pension at retirement. It provides benefits for your loved ones. Again, there's a potential lump sum as well as dependent pensions payable from alpha. So again, partnership, it's a lump sum only. Where alpha, dependent pensions are also payable. So if you have a spouse or a partner, for example, they would get 37.5% of your alpha pension for the rest of their life. Now, you benefit from tax relief and employer contributions. Of course, being a member of the pension scheme, you get full tax relief because your pension contributions come first from your pay and any deductions for tax do come after that. So you do get full tax relief. And again, your civil service pensions, whether you're in partnership or alpha, this is going to help provide the income that you need to live the life in retirement that you want. So another big takeaway from this session is thinking about how much will you need when you get there. Think about what age you want to retire. Think about what you want your life to look like. How much income are you going to need to lead that life in retirement that you would like to? Um, obviously, that's a tough question for some of us. So the Pension and Lifetime Savings Association produce figures every year um, that help us think about how much we might need in the future. Now, they publish these figures based on different types of lifestyles. So everybody's, of course, um, going to be different in terms of your wants and needs. But these are the current 2024 figures of what singles and couples might need for their retirement at a minimum level of living, moderate and comfortable. Now, this is after tax as well. So just thinking about what do you need in retirement? Of course, we all need at least the minimum. We need a we need a home. We need food. We need to make sure that we need to we get where we need to go. Um, 
but of course there's extra. Some of us like to go on holiday. Some of us like to eat out. Um, so we need to think about everything, you know, what all of our incomings are going to be, but of course, what of our, all, all of our outgoings are going to be as well. So this is just some food for thought for everybody to take away to think about, you know, you know, because you're here on the new joiner session, that suggests to me that you're at the beginning of your career and it is never too early to really start planning and thinking about what do you need at retirement? Because the sooner you know what you're going to need, the more time you're going to have to make a plan and execute a plan of how you're going to get there. So again, that's the Pension and Lifetime Savings Association figures, and that's again PLSA that you can find. Um, simple Google search will do that for you, but I hope that's been useful. So I will pass it back to Catherine, who will take us through the Q&A. Thank you, Liliana. That was great. Lots of use, useful information there for all of us on the options that are available and the differences between the Alpha and Partnership Scheme. Now we've had hundreds of questions have come in, which is great. So thank you so much for coming in with all those questions. We're going to do our best to get through as many of them now as we can. Of course, we're not going to be able to get through hundreds of questions in the next 15 minutes. We'll do our best to do as many as possible, but just worth pointing out that we do deliver our pension power and new joiner pension power sessions every single week and they're run to much smaller groups of people so any questions that you do ask on those sessions we can always get to answering all of them so if you haven't signed up to attend one of those sessions before particularly if you are new to the scheme then the new joiner pension power session is going to be really useful for you OK, so let's have a look at the questions. We're focusing on those that have been the most upvoted. I'm going to answer the first one myself um, because we've had quite a lot of questions that are asking about the calculation of your pension and the employer contributions. Now, we've tried to get this message across to you, so just want to give you a little bit of an example. Um, so the question we have here is, can you please show a calculation showing the employer contribution of 28.97% and how this affects your pension? Today, I have not seen a calculation calculation of this, simply the statement that it is generous. Now, as we've already said, the employer contribution isn't directly related to how your pension benefits are calculated. Your employer makes that generous contribution to ensure we can afford to finance your pension benefits in retirement. So let's take an example of an, ind of an individual who's earning £30,000 a year. In that one year, earning £30,000, that individual will pay contributions at 4.6% of their earnings. That's a figure of about £1,300. And their employer will make a contribution of 28.97%, which is around £9,000. In that one year, earning £30,000, that member will accrue an annual alpha pension of about £700 a year. So obviously that figure sounds quite different from the level of contributions, but the key factor to remember here is that £700 worth of pension, first of all, will be adjusted annually in line with inflation, both whilst the member is in service, while their pension is held preserved, and also while that pension is in payment in retirement. And that £700 plus inflation figure will be paid to that member every single year once they reach retirement age. Now, hopefully we'll live a nice, long, happy retirement, so that £700 is going to be paid to that member multiple years in retirement. If they live to be 95, for example, then it's going to be in payment for a really long time. So like the example Kelly referred to near the beginning of the session, in terms of the level of personal contribution the members paid, they'll get their money back in less than two years of claiming their pension at retirement age. And of course, that's just assuming a member is in the scheme for one year, if you're in the scheme for a very long time, all of those figures are multiplied in terms of the level of contribution that you pay and your employer pays, but also in terms of the pension that you get back in retirement. So I hope that makes that a little bit clearer for you. There are some examples of how this works available on the scheme website as well. So do search for this using the Civil Service Pension Scheme website and you will find further examples of this. Or again, if you want to attend one of our Pension Power sessions, we'll talk through this example for you there as well if you do need any further clarification. 
OK, so let's have a look at some of the other questions that have come through and those that have been most upvoted. So Kelly, I'm going to come to you first. We have a question from Anonymous which states, I am worried that the state pension age is going to continue to rise on the Alpha scheme. Can I access the money I have paid in earlier? What are my options for changing schemes? Obviously, if the state pension age does change, then the state pension age could alpha, in Alpha could change because they're linked together you'll still be able to access those pension benefits earlier. Like Liliana said, if you do access them earlier, then there is the ability to have that with a reduction. Now, the earlier that you claim that pension, the bigger the reduction is going to be for you. The other option is you could opt out of the Alpha scheme and go into partnership, which Liliana just explained is a DC scheme. That doesn't guarantee you a pension for life. The same ill health pensions, children's pensions, etc. But there is that option there. But you could look at EPA. So like we mentioned earlier, that's buying out the reduction of going before state pension age. So if state pension in theory was to increase to say 69, you could buy an EPA of minus one and then guarantee that you're taking your pension at 68 without any redu reduction for the time that you paid for. But as at the moment, the state pension age is 68, so that's what Alpha is linked to. But if your state pension age is 67, then your normal pensionable age in Alpha is 67. But there is other options available to you, and the links are on the screen to have a look at the calculators, buy an added pension, buy an EPA. Great, thank you, Kelly. That's great. Um, OK, so let's move on to our next question. Um, Liliana, we've got a member who's asking about transfers in. So I was unaware of the 12 month deadline. What options are there for those of us who missed that deadline for transferring in? Yeah, so the civil service pension scheme, when it comes to Alpha, Alpha is a statutory pension scheme. So we actually have to abide by those rules and it does state that you do have 12 months to transfer in benefits. So once that deadline has passed, there is no opportunity to transfer into Alpha. However, if you do additional voluntary contributions or if you decide to go into partnership, you should be able to bring in any pensions you have outside of that into legal and general. But again, that's a process that you would start with legal and general and, and speak to them to see what that would be. Uh, but again, the 12 month deadline, um, it, it, it is, the deadline. So once that's passed, there's no opportunity for alpha. But again, you have the opportunity to transfer into um, partnership or the AVCs. Lovely. Thanks, Lil. That's great. Um, so we've got another question. I'll just quickly pick up here. Someone's asked, do we get access to pensions or financial advice? If so, how? So not in terms of anything provided by the civil service pension scheme. We've got lots of tools to support you um, in terms of sessions such as this, our pension power sessions and other training that's available, as well as a whole host of information that's available on the civil service pension scheme website to try and give you as much information as possible. But the scheme can't give you any financial advice advice to tell you what the right thing for you to do is. So if you do need financial advice, then you would need to seek the services of an independent financial advisor. Um, but in terms of information, first, we would recommend you look at the information that's available for you online. Lots of our sessions are recorded and available on our YouTube channel, which hopefully will point you in the right direction before you need to resort to that. But financial advice from a registered financial advisor, of course, is always available. OK, so Kelly, next question for you. So if you leave the civil service after X number of years, does your pension still accrue at 2.32 percent? So what happens there if someone leaves before retirement age? Catherine, so if you leave before your retirement age and you choose to leave your pension with us, it's what's known as deferred, which means it's frozen at the time that you leave, but is increased annually each year with CPI. So the 2.32% is the amount of accrual that you earn while you are actively working in the civil service. When you leave the civil service, whether that could be retirement or you leave the civil service and go and work elsewhere and leave it for a later date, it's increased by CPI, which is applied each April to your pension. 
Great, thank you, Kelly. I think our next question is quite similar, where we've asked, um, could you please explain the end of the year balance of £1,365.73, which was the example that Kelly talked us through from the member who had two years in the Alpha scheme. How does that figure translate into pay once retired? So that is the annual amount of pension the member will receive from Alpha based on two years of being in the scheme. Although, as Kelly has said, that figure will be revalued with CPI inflation adjustment every year once it's been accrued, whether the member remains in service, their pension is preserved and it's also revalued every year in retirement. So it will increase assuming rates of inflation are positive. Um, the next couple of questions are about the level of contribution and how that fits in with the accrual rate. So hopefully we've answered those questions now um, and we don't need to cover that off again. Um, so Liliana, the next question I'm going to come to you with is what's the maximum additional monthly payment that I can make towards my alpha pension and will my employer pay anything extra if I do? Yeah, so the maximum additional monthly payment, there's not necessarily a single maximum monthly payment. Now, the way added pension works, for example, you're purchasing additional annual pension. Now, the cost of that's going to depend on your age. So the maximum amount of alpha pension, there is there is a maximum annual um, amount that you can actually add to your alpha pension. That's the maximum. Now, the cost of that is going to depend on your age. So generally speaking, added pensions um, less expensive while you're younger and it gets a little bit more expensive as you approach retirement because the benefits are anticipated to be paid sooner. Um, so that's something to think about. Now, again, you can use the calculator on the Civil Service Pensions website and you can see exactly how much pension would cost you. Um, but something you want to consider as well is the annual allowance. Now, for the modest pension saver, it's probably not something you'll necessarily have to worry about. But if you're thinking about putting a considerable amount of money into your pension, the annual allowance is how much tax relief we can have towards our pension savings. Um, there's lots of good information on the Civil Service Pension website about the annual allowance, but um, we could potentially be taxed if we're going over that allowance for our pension savings. So again, for most of us, the modest pension saver might not be something you necessarily have to worry about. But again, if you're thinking about putting considerable amount, you want to know what the annual allowance is and how that might impact you individually. Um, and in terms of employer paying extra, your employer will only pay towards alpha or they'll pay towards partnership. Any additional contributions you make are yours and yours alone. Um, so I hope that helps. Thanks, Liliana. Um, OK, so Kelly, I'll come to you with another question. So what happens if I leave the civil service? Can I transfer my pension to another scheme in the private sector? If you leave the civil service and you leave with less than two years service, then you'd be eligible to transfer your pensions elsewhere or take a refund of your contributions only. If you want to transfer, then it would transfer yours and your employer's contributions. If you've got over two years service, then you will only be able to transfer your pension into a like for like scheme. So, for example, local government and pensions, NHS, police service, those types of places, you wouldn't be able to transfer it into BT's pension scheme or MS's pension scheme because they don't have the same like for like rules as the civil service does. So they won't be guaranteeing you a pension for life. So it would depend on the club rules when you're choosing to transfer. So normally the private sector don't have the same eligibility as the civil service pensions do so you wouldn't be able to just transfer them but if it's less than two years of service then the situation would be slightly different for you thank you kelly that's great i think we've got time for just one more question so if i left the civil service liliana and took my pension at 60 am i allowed to continue working elsewhere and in any capacity so what are the rules around that please yeah, so if you take your pension, once you've taken your pension, um, you can work elsewhere. Um, that doesn't necessarily impact your pension. Again, the only thing when you're taking pensions and when you're working is tax. So any income you have, your civil service pension, any other pensions you have, any employment, any income you have is all added together 
and anything in excess to your allowance is taxable at the relevant rate, but absolutely nothing stopping anyone from taking their civil service pension and working elsewhere. But be aware as well, there's something that some um, employers offer in the civil service called partial retirement. So partial retirement is the opportunity to take some or all of the pension that you've accrued and you can carry on working with your employer. Um, so it's something that you and your employer would have to discuss at that point because they would have to be OK with you dropping your pay by at least 20 percent because that's what you have to do to partially retire. Again, it's dropping your pay at least 20 percent taking some or all of the pension you've accrued and carry on working. But um, yeah, absolutely, you can do that as long as your employer agrees, or of course you can take your pension and work elsewhere. But as Catherine said, there's so much support that we offer through the Civil Service Pensions website, as well as the training facilities that gives you all of this information in terms of your options and, and guidance about the pension scheme as a whole. So lots of supports available. So if you are interested, there's gonna be lots, uh, lots of links and, and information information available this week on these topics. So yeah, just be aware of that, but hopefully that helps for now. Thanks so much, Liliana. That was great. OK, and that's pretty much all we've got time for today. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I hope the information provided to you today has been useful. We will be sending out an evaluation survey later today to get some feedback on how you found today's session. So do please take a few minutes to fill that in for us and let us know how we can make these sessions better for you in the future to make sure we're sharing as much information as you like on the topics that you're really interested in. If we haven't had time to answer your question today and we have had hundreds of them come through, then do please consider attending some of our other sessions later in the week if you're already registered. Or if not, then of course, as we've mentioned, we do have our Pension Power and New Joiner Pension Power sessions available. That we run every week to small groups so we can answer your questions in those sessions as well. And that's if, of course, you can't find the information you're looking for on the Civil Service Pension Scheme website. But tons of information is on there for you if you have a little look around. We do also have our Civil Service Pensions podcast. Two seasons of this are all already available either via the Scheme website or wherever you get your podcasts if you already listen to podcasts regularly. Season three launched just last week and we'll be dropping a new episode every week so you can hear more from us in a slightly different format on the Civil Service Pensions podcast as well. OK, so that wraps everything up for today. Again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I hope the information provided was useful and we'll see you again on one, on one of our other sessions in the future. Bye for now, everyone.